I can't not start with Dahlia. I have to ask you about the broccoli, and I'm sure I'm not the first to ask. <laughs> Tell, how, how did this happen? <laughs> well, she's sitting here in New York as a broccoli, so girl, you asked the right question. No, <laughs> um, the broccoli thing it was uh, kind of a gag to me because I didn't think that um, it was going to blow up as it did. Um, so I'm like living for all the, uh, the memes and the gifts of like me as a broccoli, me doing a bunch of random ass shit, me like placed into a whole bunch of different like places all over in a bathroom in a stadium and girl everywhere. So I'm living for it. Another detail that has been memed to the rafters is Jan, <laughs> your moment after the rusical, um, did you expect, I mean, I'm sure at the time you had no idea what was going on, but did you ex ever expect that that moment would get picked up and just be thrown all over the internet? I figured that people would be upset by me not winning, but I didn't know the magnitude of which it would go and how it would become this like meme of, you know, that time and like of the season. It's gaggy to me. I knew that I was definitely angry. I was feeling some type of way. And I just was like, I remember in that moment I was like, relax, like just breathe, try to breathe, but me breathing is just the resting bitch face of it all. I was, uh, you saw every single emotion. It was just like the meme of like the algebra sign, like going across. That was me in that moment. Just be like, well, what does this mean? What's going on? And just like all of the fury coming through my eyes. So that was fun to watch back. Rock, there's a, there's the moment from you that I thought was hysterical from your, from your first number when you're, you, you, the line about the fart I thought was so funny. Oh, the high kick to a fart. That's why I don't wear white outfits anymore because they always end up being an ombre. Oh my god. I look like one of those like cold brew coffees from Starbucks. <laughs> I'm like a like a human crap a latte, like a like a human, what is it? A, a macchiato. There we go. <laughs> uh -oh. They're called dark rooted panties. Um, All right. <laughs> it's, 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 my my biology is just bad. I've been eating too much broccoli, and I'm also lactose intolerant. So, good. Can we all confirm that like number one rule of drag is don't have iced coffee before a performance? Is that it's is that true? The number two rule. <laughs> Red Bull. Uh, rock. Rock. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you did. I'm glad that you haven't shied away from fart jokes. I'm glad it didn't scare you away from fart jokes forever because I think they're gold. I gotta well, say, if I got some fart jokes, I would have won the one woman show. So, <laughs> um, okay, so I've got a question, Britta, for you specifically. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you're a New York queen. We know that for sure. Yeah, but you're originally from Arizona, and I wondered, like. What, what part of the Brita personality that we know is born out of Arizona? Like, where does the Arizona come in? I mean, that was where I was born and raised as a small Mormon child that was Polynesian. Like, I mean, everything that I am today is because of my childhood. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, I mean, I, 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 it's when I fell in love with theater. It was the first time I ever saw drag. The first time I ever saw drag was I saw Alyssa Edwards competing in a pageant in the year 2000. Um, it, it was wild, wild. Um, and so that was my first experience. So uh, ev everything that has made me today, and, and you know, after Arizona, I moved straight to New York and I've been in New Yorker for 13 years now. And I'm proud of it. RC is going through it right now. So I'm so proud of it. And just like me, I can rise from the goddamn ashes and our city can be, our city can come together. We can be good. And I will be giving shows as soon as we better, bitch. Nikki, I wanted to touch on I know that you had mentioned that you did the makeup for Pete Davidson when Brew hosted SNL, and I wanted to ask you about that because that is such a wild experience. Uh huh. Yeah, How I I had the the opportunity to to get a call and be at, being asked by by RuPaul to come do Pete Davidson's makeup for Saturday Night Live, which was wild because uh, it's a tall straight dude that right off the bat tells me. The worst part of my job is to sit on that chair. So, you know, have a nice next three hours trying to paint a man. Uh, but I can tell you that I helped him get in drag through all the little details of getting in drag, which I was very pleased about. <laughs> and, uh, he's just very sweet, uh, such a good ally of the LGBTQ community. He was super fun. 
and yeah, and he's a beautiful. He looks like Rebecca, Rebecca Glasscock from from <laughs> season one. Am I right? Uh, he looked yeah. exactly like her, which was gaggy. Yeah, he looked yeah. fucking great. <laughs> it was so yeah. good. Good job. <laughs> so, so Britta, you kind of touched on this, and I was curious. I mean, I have so much sympathy for you guys because this has been such a strange season. Just like, what was? It? How many episodes did we get in before literally the world shut down? Like two. <laughs> Two. We got we oh. got into two. Um, yeah, I've been I've been uh, I've been here in Maine at my parents' house. Um, I came out right after the third episode and came here. I've been here for I believe like sixty five days now. Um, yeah, it's been. And I, I never thought that I would be watching the entire season from my parents' house. Um, but you know, I, you know, throughout this entire experience, I really feel that like we have to be we have to be grateful. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. I, you know, it really puts a lot of things into perspective. And, and and especially, I didn't come here with any drag. I didn't realize how severe everything was going to be and that it would be like this. Um, I showed up here literally with boy clothes and that's it. And I've had to make things work. I literally did one makeup thing as soon as I got here and I used my mom's makeup um, <laughs> to, to create a look, to get into the gig, to try and make some money. Because when, when you're on Drag Race, we have the hopes that hopefully we'll tour around, we'll be able to make coin to pay back our debts. I spent more on Drag Race than I did on seven years of college. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of money and, um, we hope to make it back, but, you know, it, it's unfortunate that this is happening, but it's really putting a lot of things in per to perspective and really making me grateful for a lot of things. And also, I'm also realizing that, like, you don't need all the glitz and the glam in order to be a drag queen. Like, honestly, it's what's, what comes from it within and what you can make work around the house. And bitch, I'm definitely making it work, honey. Like, I had this shit shipped to me. She's gonna, as soon as this interview's over, it's all. I'm done for season 12, so she's going to turn her into another gig, and we're just going to keep on trucking, sis. <laughs> yes. Can, can any, for the rest of you, do you want to speak to what it's been like, I guess, watching yourself in this, I, I, I mean, it's not in a vacuum because there's social media, but has it felt different since we have been stuck at home watching it versus being out at the bars and watching it with fans and that sort of thing? When you go home, it's a lot harder. Um, sometimes like when you're out at a club doing like an event um like a lot of the girls go home in these big public settings and there's so many people there to like rally around you and really just make you feel good and sometimes when you're at home you can trap yourself in like a little like glass case of emotion um and it, it, it can get a little scary when you watch yourself on tv and you have like an echo chamber of anxiety sometimes um, I know a lot of us are quarantined with people that we love and respect and know us personally. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm quarantined with my, my partner and he has helped me so much through this time. Um, just really keep myself grounded and look at things through a different perspective. But my heart is, my heart goes out to all of you people that are by yourselves. Just know that all of us are with you in spirit. Yeah, I think that, like, obviously it is very bittersweet. We should be traveling, we should be going around, we should be experiencing the crowds, but obviously the online presence has been such a crazy, unexpected thing. And I think the one thing that I take away from it is that if we were going around to all these different places and we were on planes, we were on buses, we, were not, we would not be able to communicate to our fans in different areas of the world like we are now. It's so amazing that I can talk to my fans who are in, the UK or in Europe or in Asia or in Australia every single day, truthfully, because we're in homes. I try to go live and paint with my fans and answer their questions and just communicate with them where I wouldn't have that opportunity or that luxury to do that if I was traveling around the world. And so obviously it would be nice to go do that. And I'm looking forward to those opportunities, but I'm happy that people have got to know me in a more personal setting and more personal way curated on my social media. Right. I mean, we're literally seeing into everyone's like homes or where they're staying right now. And it's so personal. It's, it's kind of wild to think about yeah. that side of it. As much as it was very frustrating to not be able to tour around the world or to just like have our names screamed at the club when your ass get kicked out instead of praying yourself to bed alone at home. As on, on, on the brighter side, I think that we have so much time to really connect with the fan base, so much time to share meaningful and important message that I think that the fans are really connecting with us on a whole other level. We're not just 
this TV personality that they love on TV. We are this TV personality that they discovered on TV, but that they really managed to fall in love with online. And I think that this is something that without a quarantine, would have not, we would have not had the opportunity to do. Another thing that is that it, it, you know, with as much love that there is, unfortunately, a lot of people right now are definitely feeling it um, and, and going through their own little situation. You know, being, being um, <clears throat> essentially, I mean, you can't, deny it I, I was the villain of the season so having having I've I had to leave social media for an entire month because of because of people because people are feeling it and people want to let me know and and I'm here quarantined by myself with my parents and the only thing I have and the only access I have to other people and my friends and my lifestyle is through social media so to go onto social media and then have people send death threats and all that other thing is 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 a thing that that I, I've learned so much about the show, the fandom, um, but also I, I've came back from it very strong, um, and I know that I can't listen to those people. Um, however, it's just you, people need to listen to 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 realize that this, when it comes down to it, this is a television show, and and the, they they you know, and it's good, it's drama that makes you feel a certain way. So I'm glad it made you feel a certain way. However, it is not the person you saw you saw 15 minutes of me acting a way that i didn't even like so um to take it with a grain of salt bitch because that this is that that ain't me i'm a good person bitch right. you have any of those bitches in new york city <laughs> i'll tell you otherwise <laughs> and dahlia did you have thoughts on the like the social media side of it and just just watching it kind of in this echo chamber um yeah um, i think i was literally the only girl out of this cast that um <laughs> literally got to, uh got eliminated while uh the bars were still happening so like while we were in still in the bars i think i was the only one um so which i feel like everybody says that um they wish they would have had the opportunity like if they did go home to get home like get eliminated like in a bar or something but like for me it was the most and like not embarrassing but kind of awkward moment because you're just sitting there and you're like I already know I'm going home and then everybody's in here like rooting for you and because you know when you're at that bar everybody's rooting you for you obviously because you're there and the, the, you may be the, your favorite queen or not but it's just kind of like awkward when you're just sitting there like oh if only know I'm going home <laughs> so it was just like it's kind of cringy but like um it was at the end of the day it was still kind of good because I also had people there that was like oh girl you still did good and had my back so it was amazing that way but also on a brighter note like our season is doing amazing. We're killing it. I feel like our season is like probably one of the best seasons in a long time. So uh, no matter what happens, we're all going to come out on this on like the good side. So yeah. stay tuned for all of us touring girls. <laughs> we're kill it. What's something, looking back on the season, what's something that you wish you would have brought to it, whether that's something physical, like a, an outfit or a wig or something like mental, do you wish you would have been prepared for more going into the season? Um, why don't we start with Dahlia? Um, I definitely wish I would have brushed up on improv. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, just, I, I, that was the one thing going into the competition that I was like nervous about doing just because improv is not my thing. I'm a funny person, but I'm not good with taking something and making it into something with comedy because it's just, that's not my forte. So like, um, like if it was an acting challenge and we had like, you know, a script or something, I could play off of that. But like improv is just not my thing. So I was hoping like, girl, let's, let's hope that this is like, you know, maybe the fifth episode in bitch. It was the first one. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it was, it was like, that's the one thing that I wish that I would have brought, um, you know, uh, brushing up on my improv skills. You know, take a few classes or lessons. Um, Nikki, what 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 about you? Uh, I think I would I should have got up probably listen more of a like self confidence audiobook or something like that to really believe that I'm that bitch because I watch it now on TV and I'm like you could have gone so much further if you would have been your number one fan. So I think that this is something that I'm working on and without being too cocky, <laughs> like I, you don't want to you know you don't want to go overboard. And also on the fashion aspect, I wish I would have had space to bring props. There was a lot of like very conceptual outfits and uh, the price to pay is that you, it looks like Carl, which is my boy self, is wearing pajamas in the workroom because I didn't have space to pack a boy uh, wardrobe and my uh, quarterback had no freaking ball. 
Wow. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's hard to pack for Drag Race. People don't realize it, but it is hard to pack your imagination on that main stage. It, That's amazing. Yeah. Like, I don't even think about that part of it. Somebody needs to write, like, the, the guide to packing. <laughs> for you, for you. Bro, my, I didn't even bring suitcases. I brought boxes. <laughs> my first episode when I wore that tool outfit, it took up, like, like Jan, you were there. Dolly, you were there. It took up a suitcase and a half, and there were face bags with the air taken out of them. And here's the thing. It was so big that I literally forgot more than half of my makeup. More than half of my makeup. So I got there, and I was crunchy. Like, I was like, where the, where the heck is all my makeup? It was in another bag that we had to switch out of because it, the bag was too small, essentially, was oh what happened. So, um, so did we share? Did people share? <laughs> um, yeah, they did. Yeah, a lot of the girls shared. A lot of Good. the girls, look, I just needed white for my under eyes. That's basically half of my makeup. And the girls <laughs> um, Jen, what about you? What's something you wish you had brought? Um, I just wish that I was a little less green in a way. Sorry, Dahlia. Um, I wish that I was a little less, like, green in terms of just wanting to impress the judges. I, I know that I'm that bitch, and I have everything that it takes to win this competition, but I just wanted their validation so much that I feel like it got in my way of knowing what my worth is. So I think if I ever go back to an all-star season or if I ever get the chance to come back, I would just go in there and be like, I know I'm good enough. I know I'm a strong competitor. Let me just believe that 10 more percent for myself and 10 percent less for the judges panel. And instead of showing every single color that I have in my Crayola box, I'll just show the brightest and boldest colors so that you know where I'm, where my strong points are, and that uh, you know I have what it takes to win a crown. The purple one, right? The purple one, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and I was like, let me give that to you today, Nikki. Let me give you some of that strength, Mama. And look at her. I'm vision. <laughs> Um, you know, I wish I would have brought uh, probably a little, uh, I, was, I was so in my head during the entire competition and it made me act a certain way and it made me, I, I was just, in, in the times that I did say New York so many times or Entertainer of the Year, it's because I was trying to like talk myself up and be like, yo, you belong here. You, you, you've done some things, you, you definitely belong. I was just trying to talk myself up to be like, you deserve this, you deserve this, you deserve this. Because when I found myself in the bottom, I, I, I wish I was a little more, I guess, self-aware of, of, of certain things. Um, yeah, because I think, I think my package that I brought um, was, was pretty strong. I just got so in my head. So that's, that's the one thing that I would have changed and I would have I brought, yeah. I totally get that, yeah. I mean, we see that so often. It's, it's so much about being able to get out of your head and step outside of yourself and, and recognize what's worth highlighting in you already. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. And you know, when, they, when they say it's RuPaul's Drag Race, it is definitely a race, honey. It is. <laughs> I was like, people always say it's a race. They are in a race. And I was like, oh shit, bitch, it's a race. <laughs> <laughs> since we've gone through this crazy, crazy time with this season, I think it's unfortunately pretty likely the All-Stars Queens are gonna have to do this too for All-Stars 5. What's, what's maybe some broad advice you would have for them, just like to how, how, to, how to do the season at home like this? Get comfortable, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally in my boxes right now. Like I look glamorous on the top, but she's lazy on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is, learn to adapt to this social media environment right now. Like your number one priority is learning how to adapt your drag and what you do well in a club onto a social media platform or a digital media, because um, this is everyone's opportunity to step up their game and to um, learn a new kind of genre of drag. So my advice is go get some online classes, learn how to do video editing, learn how to do filming, and order your, order your cameras right now because they will take four to five weeks to get here. Order it right now. Start, click on that button and it's in the cart, but you gotta go grab it, okay? <laughs> That's great. My yeah. advice would be to um, not get fat. Um, I put on like- <laughs> well, 
I mean, I like that I'm gaining weight, but you know, when you have to put on those outfits for like the reunion and finale, baby girl, and you send your um, designer what your uh, waist was, and <laughs> it really isn't that anymore, so <laughs> you still gotta squeeze into that, you know, just don't gain any weight. It looks good, but it's not gonna work for those outfits, girl. I would just say like, embrace it. Art always <laughs> finds a way. We all have the talent to adapt to whatever situation we're in. That's why we're on the show. That's why we are on RuPaul's Drag Race. And we're able to do those things and to show everybody who we are from the comfort of our living room. So embrace it, enjoy it, connect with your fans, because that's the reason why all of us are here. And just try to make the best out of a bad situation. And just know that positivity is a cyclical thing. And then if you're giving positive energy out, you're going to get it back when you need it the most. So I'm just saying that to all of the girls. <laughs> also embrace the technical difficulties of this digital age because nothing is funnier than looking back at clips and seeing girls like fiddle around with their cameras yes. like when jackie fell down during her show that that was the highlight of my life i could watch that forever yeah. <laughs> that's so good that's so true I, I completely agree with jen i think that the less you're going to cry about what you should you could have had or what, what spotlight you, sh you deserve to have after going through such a, uh, an intense experience. And as, long, and as soon as you jump back on your feet and just go forward with new ways of, of entertaining, this is how you're gonna overcome uh, this crisis. Mm -hmm. True. I think Jan has done it the best. Like she's been popping out these music videos every single week and like truly using and social distancing while she does it. So <laughs> it's been, it's been, it's been pretty incredible. I would just say, follow what Jan does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We're all doing an amazing job. I'm really proud of us. I agree. I'm so, I mean, you guys have, it's, it's been amazing to watch. I'm, it's gotta be tough. I can't even imagine. So Congrats, I'm so proud of all of you. <laughs> Rock, I love your background right now. <laughs> um, Cameron, thank you so much for asking these questions though. I feel like so many people leave out um, Corona and how it's affected us. And this is the first interview that uh -huh. I had that, that it, really, it, it really affected us um, while we've been here. So th thank you for asking these of questions. Of course. I mean, you know, I, I feel it in my ways too. It just, it's so weird. I, I don't know how I couldn't ask you guys about it. And it's just like, it's it's been inspiring just to see you like on a daily level see you go on live on instagram and the everything just to see you guys still working it even though we're like stuck at home so thank you all so so much this has been so great <laughs>